I was walking her and all of a sudden there was a yelp. Okay, let's go, buddy. When we got the dog, he was on death's door. Oh my gosh, Rue. She either would have been left to die or killed. He doesn't seem to care what his wheels go over, if it's someone's foot, a dog's foot, a duck. She's gonna run him right over. <laughs> At Possibility in Toronto, Janice Olnick makes and fits prosthetic and orthotic devices for dogs and other animals. God, dead? Okay. Got it. I know, what do you think? While she was originally trained to make devices for humans, she's now modified her skills to help animals lead their happiest, healthiest, and most playful lives, making them adaptable animals. This is Lucy, and we're coming to see Janice to get a brace made for her because she tore her cruciate ligament. The cruciate ligament provides stability to a dog's stifle or knee joint. When Lucy, a 13-year-old Labradoodle, tore her right ligament a few months ago, her owner, Lucia Chown, already had some experience with this type of injury. About two and a half years ago, she tore her left cruciate ligament and we got surgery for her, a TPLO surgery. But they said, once a dog has had one cruciate ligament go, the other one probably will follow. So we had our fingers crossed, but nope. It happened just in June. I was walking her and all of a sudden there was a yelp. This time around, Lucy has chosen to go the less invasive route, which means today Janice is doing a test fit for a knee brace. Her situation is, is not uncommon where she's had a surgical repair on her other side and now after a period of time, the other leg becomes involved with the same sort of injury. And Lucy is of an advanced age where they're like, maybe we're going to look for another option instead of surgery and maybe that could be a brace. And so I, that is a, a common scenario for why I see dogs. Like a lot of my stifle brace cases are middle-aged to older dogs. We just freed up the patella. We'll have Lucy walk just a little and then we'll have a closer look at the fit. I always do like to stress with for people that bracing is a very good next best option for knee injuries, but they I do like them to consider their surgical options first. And surgery is a way to, to fix it and hopefully you don't have to think about it anymore. Whereas bracing is, is definitely ongoing management of the issue. Nice. Good job. Lucy is happy to try anything that will give Lucy some relief. So I think she's gonna do okay. Once we made the decision not to do TPLO, anything to make her comfortable and to help her uh, walk again. And she's given us so much, really. I mean, she's almost 13 and has been the perfect dog. I couldn't ever imagine a dog even close. I love to walk, she loves to walk, so I'm hoping that we can walk without worrying about her stability. You did really good. With the fitting complete, Janice can now move on to creating the final brace, which Lucia and Lucy will return to try on tomorrow. Okay, I okay. think we're good. Great, great. yeah, Thank and so we're set for 10 o'clock tomorrow. 10 o'clock tomorrow. Um, great. Thank you. Well, this is Rue. Um, she's just coming in today for a few adjustments on her cart because she's had a growth spurt. Yeah. Rue is a one and a half year old goat who was born without the use of her front legs. Now she gets around in a custom cart that Janice made for her. Oh my gosh, Rue. So a repair. Yeah. Rue has a personality that keeps her owners, Megan Mustachi and Mike Petal on their toes. I feel like maybe the stitching came loose. Yeah. She's yeah. wild, so we actually had Janice put a handle on her little thing last time because she just goes off and you have to try to grab her. So the handle is like a quick grab for us. She would be like the kid that needs a leash. Um, yeah. So she went crazy yesterday and popped the handle off. So yeah, she's yeah. getting that fixed up. Mike Pedal has found that as Rue continues to grow, they also have to keep adjusting the height of the cart so that her front and back end stay level. We have to continually adjust the balance and the, the, I guess the depth of where she is yeah. from the axle so that she can stay balanced. When she was smaller, she could run around on her, on her hind legs. That's why she got her name Rue like a kangaroo because she, yeah. when she got a little bit stronger, she used to kind of run around the kitchen and the house, but she yeah. needs the cart to, to help her out because it's really hard on her joints and her back and whatnot. Just hanging out. Hi. In the beginning, it was difficult for Megan and Mike to even find someone to help Rue. So many people won't work with them. So they're happy to work with dogs and cats and like sometimes rabbits and stuff like that. But finding 
somebody who will work with a farm animal, like put the time in to give them that same level of care, it's, it's really hard to find. It's been a long time to kind of get to this point and thank goodness for Janice, cause like otherwise she wouldn't have the quality of life that she does like at all. While Rue leads a full life now, due to the severity of her limb differences, her chance for survival at birth was slim. She was born with um, a severe front limb deformity, so both of her front legs were completely curved around, and pretty much the joints are all backwards. So we picked her up, what, eight hours old? Yeah. Yeah, she had been born that day, and we picked her up because she couldn't stand to nurse, and the farmer wasn't really gonna do anything with her, like it was more extensive. So she would have been either euthanized or she would have starved to death because she couldn't nurse. Thanks to Megan and Mike's care, Rue's lucky to be alive, but she's not the only one of Janice's clients who has narrowly escaped death. Okay, this is Plucky and we're here today at Possibility because they've already done a, a prosthesis for him, but now we're gonna come in and have a slipper made so he's got something he can wear around the house. Patrick Buckley is bringing in Bucky today to check the fit of a new indoor yeah. slipper. The German Shepherd Mastiff mix was recently rescued after losing his front paw in northern Manitoba. We'll slip off his prosthesis sure. and we'll try this on. He got caught in a trap out in the boreal forest out in the snow and was caught there for arguably weeks and in the effort to disentangle himself from the snare, he lost his foot. He came out, he looked like a skull and a skeleton. And that's probably about as close to death as you can possibly go. He had problems with his eyes. He had been injured on his hindquarters, likely by animals. And so he limped his way out. So I think in his slipper, we're gonna have him with a thinner sock in there. While Janice has already made Bunky a prosthetic boot, his owners wanted something softer for inside the house. It's sort of a flexible padded rubber. It's not as tall or big as his prosthesis, but it's gonna have straps on it. He looks pretty mellow right now. When you put that boot on, it's go time. He's gonna go for a walk and he literally bucks. So. He actually did some damage to my foot earlier in the summer where he was jumping around and landed on my toe. So we're like, we have to, we have to do something or we're, one of us is gonna get damaged significantly. With his slipper, Bucky can now be comfortable indoors without the fear of injuring his owners. Without a prosthetic on, he wouldn't put his paw down on the floor. So he was constantly hopping around on, on one foot. And this is a 110 pound dog. So he's literally trying to do one handed push ups bouncing up and down stairs, in and out of vehicles. Once Janice has checked the fit and strap placement, Bucky is free to go for the time being. He's so compliant today. No, I'm not pull he's not pulling and dancing. Well, because he's not just about to go out for a walk, that's deadly. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go and rivet this on. Okay, let's go, buddy. Coming up. And he owns us now, I think. She figured it out faster than all of the dogs, really. <laughs> Adaptable Animals is back. While Janice works on his slipper back at Pausability, Bucky heads for a walk at the park. Originally, he was only supposed to be fostered for a short amount of time with Patrick and his family. During the pandemic, we said, we don't really have time to commit heavily to an animal, so fostering is probably a good idea because it's a short-term commitment. And then, of course, the first dog we get, we uh, fall in love with and adopt him ourselves, so now I'm heavily committed to the dog. When we got the dog, he was on death's door. So after weeks of nursing him back to health, it became time to put him up for adoption. Rather than working so hard to train someone else how to be this dog's new family, it's like, well, we've put in all the effort and all the work, so we may as well keep him ourselves. So that was our first foster fail. That's how we came to uh, live with Bucky. It's not the other way around. He owns us now, I think. After the long road it's taken him to get here, Bucky deserves his new comfortable life. Now he's living a pretty bougie life down in uh, Oakville, like he goes on vacations. And if anybody has earned it, it's this guy. And with his new slipper on the way, Bucky will be more comfortable than ever. Sometimes it's nice to have something they can wear in the house that's not the full device, but it's gonna offer some protection to the, the distal end when they're not being as active, but still trying to walk on the limb. He did the walking? 
<gasps> what is that? I know. Oh, it's gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna sit oh in your lap. Oh my goodness, are you just gonna stand with it in my lap? But no, oh my god. Come on, you gotta walk with it. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it, let's try it. Once Bucky's coaxed into walking, Janice is happy with what she sees. So it's padding, rubber, and then foam. He may really enjoy padding around on that. Okay, you walk around in this. I know, oh my goodness. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> He's like, let me just lay down and we could have a cuddle. Having reached peak comfort levels, Bucky is now happy to just lie on the floor. Janice takes the opportunity to make a few That's adjustments to his prosthetic as well. We're just trying to make him as comfortable as possible in the end of the device. So to that end, I changed out some padding in the bottom of his prosthesis. We put a new tread on it. So that should be comfortable for him too. Come on, buddy, let's go. With both his slipper and prosthesis now ready to go, Bucky and Patrick head home. Janice turns her attention to finishing the knee brace for Lucy, the elderly Labradoodle who recently tore a ligament in her knee. In a situation like this, choosing a brace over surgery has its own benefits and drawbacks. I have just trimmed it out and just finishing the trim lines. Christina's making up some straps and the cuff. The hold that you can get on instabilities is not the same as you could get going in and doing surgery. So like when they're doing surgery, they're working right on the skeleton, they're right in there. Whereas when I'm bracing, we're working from outside muscle, outside of soft tissue. So they're two different things, definitely. And yeah, I just, I describe bracing as a very good next best option, but it's not quite the same. And so the cases that I see are dogs where surgical repair is not the first or, or best option for them. We're all set, Hi, come on great. In. As Lucia returns with Lucy to try on her final brace, she's hoping Lucy can get back to some of her favorite activities soon. We have a cottage, she loves to swim. Unfortunately, it's 60 steps down to the water. We actually carried her up, but we can't keep doing that. We don't do it now, which means my husband and I have to take turns going down to the dock because she's not gonna wanna stay up in the cottage if we're both swimming. Once Lucy starts walking, Lucia can see a difference in her gait right away. Oh, look, you're walking like you're totally normal. Let's walk her outside, let her pick up a little bit of speed. I'm really happy with the decision to get a brace because I'm gonna feel better. You know, it's only gonna be helpful to Lucy. She's so much more confident with that leg, walking. Yeah, I mean, she I looks think. great. I'm gonna be really happy to see her at the cottage on all that uneven ground and not have to worry. And now if she can do the 60 stairs, I'll be in heaven. <laughs> As Lucia and Lucy head out, the brace will hopefully keep Bye. Lucy active throughout the rest of her golden years. Back in the workshop, Janice turns to mending the handle for Rue the goat's cart. This project has been a challenge for her since the beginning. We struggled through some design challenges at the start, just deciding what was the best way to keep her from not tipping. And so it was a lot of figuring stuff out and it wasn't necessarily things that I had used before, but now, I have my sources and I, I feel like carts are something that I can do. Once we got something that was solid and, and worked for her, she just proved that she's super smart and she's such a good little goat. So I re-riveted both of them. For Mike and Megan, seeing the final product has made the entire process worth it. Poor Janice, I don't know how many prototypes she had to do for Rue. Yeah. It was three or four, I think. It was just before Christmas, we actually brought her first cart home. And then she's since gotten an outdoor cart because she kept tipping her little one outside because she has no idea that she can't go full she speed. She gets going, yeah. And she lives inside with us, actually. She's inside with us and we take her outside to hang out, but otherwise she's like a house goat. Yeah. Honestly, she figured it out faster than all of the dogs, really. <laughs> As Mike and Megan take Rue for a spin outside, it's apparent just how much she loves her cart. She's like yeah. really embraced it. It's, she knows that when she's in her cart, she can yeah. do the thing she wants to do it's, and be capable, right? But Rue isn't the only animal that Mike and Megan have in their care. We run a nonprofit animal rescue and sanctuary, and it kind of just happened. Um, it kind of just snowballed into what it is today with the amount of animals that we have. We take in abused, neglected, animals, um, farm animals that, that need forever homes, basically. Black Goat Farm Sanctuary was named after the first goat they saved, a little black goat named Totes. Three years, four years later, we have 14 goats. 
Nine sheep, three cows, five pigs. Running the sanctuary, which now relies solely on donations, can be difficult both financially and emotionally. We generally funded it ourselves for a few years, but when it grew in scale, then we just couldn't anymore. Before they all head back to the sanctuary, though, a special visitor, who also uses a cart, is coming to see Rue today. Coming up. Oh, what is that? Guys can play bumper. Oh, bumper cars. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Adaptable Animals is back. At Pawsibility, Rue the Goat and her owners, Megan and Mike, are waiting for a special visit from another animal in a cart. Oh my goodness, big day. This is Winston. He's here to have his cart raised and to get a new chest protector. Come on, bud. Today, Lauren Edwards is bringing in her young dog, Winston. She's excited for him to see Rue now that he has a cart of his own. Come on, Winnie, who's that? But actually, our first appointment ever as well, Winston met her. So I have a picture of tiny Winston with Rue the goat. But it is interesting. I know Megan well, and these this goat and dog have this very similar issues with the one front arm that's sort of bent up, and um, their wheelchairs are pretty much the exact same. So that's really cute to see them together. Are you not impressed? No, she is not. <laughs> I feel like Rue was just, she was giving him the side eye and she wasn't too sure what to make, but I did like when they were nose to nose. I don't think I haven't had two animals meet in their carts before, so it's been nice, yeah. It was a nice moment. You guys can play bumper, oh, bumper cars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no, look how far you hit him. It was actually Megan who recommended Pawsibility to Lauren, but the two originally connected over their shared love of rescuing animals. We both have farm animal sanctuaries with sheep and goats and stuff. And she's my, we're each other's go-to when we have questions or things are going wrong or emotionally, we just need to talk to someone. So Megan's been just a godsend for me for sure. Um, when I need advice or I have a sick animal, I'm, I'm in tears. She's the first person. Well, I call the vet and then I call Megan. <laughs> For Janice, it's nice to see all of her initial hard work in figuring out the carts paying off. For the longest time, I was like, I don't make carts. Carts are, are well done by other companies. The tiny little gap that I found was that front end carts, I've had an opportunity to make some where I can incorporate that chest piece and prosthetic componentry and connect the dog right to the axle. When you hold on to the, the chest, it just gives them a really good control over the cart. Although the past four years have been a wild ride for Megan and Mike, seeing animals like Rue thrive helps them continue their work. I don't think either one of us would change yeah. anything. I mean, we, would, we no. wouldn't tell you that this is what we thought would no. happen with our lives a few years ago. I mean, every single thing in our life has changed completely. Um, but we're, you know, we get great support from the local community and online supporters, which, which helps a lot. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't change anything. She's gonna run him right over. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later. Yeah. With Rue gone, it's time to get Winston out of his cart and onto the table for his fitting. A recent medical discovery means Janice will be making a custom chest protector for him today. It's just like a flexible padded rubber, basically. At first, we thought that he just didn't have front legs. It uh, didn't seem like a big deal. I have another dog that uses a wheelchair with no back legs. Recently, we found out that it's a lot more extensive than that. Winston's sternum, the bones didn't develop, so his ribs aren't actually connected in the front. So he can go maybe back down in his yeah. cart. I'm going to get this front piece attached and then all my straps made. There's certainly a thought that his chest is not well protected. So if he's coming forward and landing on his chest the way he does when he's not in his cart, if he is playing with his sibling, someone steps on him, could he be injured? The thought was that we were gonna make him a chest protector that would sort of act as basically his, his sternum and his ribs and just give another layer of, of protection to that area. With such a personable and playful dog, it will be a relief for Lauren once Winston has his chest protector for times when he's not in his cart. It's pretty exciting, buddy. You can maybe play with your sister tonight. <laughs> Winston loves everyone. Right now his best friend is a piglet, but I'm he's the most loving little dog. Every person, every animal, everyone he's met, he's just happy to see. And the, all the animals, he just walks up to and starts licking their faces. And half of them are just like, what is this? Oh, that's awesome. So now he can play with his siblings again. And 
do some things that he hasn't been able to do. Once she's happy with the fit, Janice moves on to finishing touches on the chest plate, as well as making a height adjustment to his cart, leaving Winston free to run around on the floor. He's four and a half months old now. Uh, came to me at about six weeks old and um, just killing life. His front's a little low, so we need to raise his front back up so that his back is, is straight again. Just It's just because he's growing. So we're here every four to six weeks while he's growing. It can take animals a while to get used to a new car height. Should we try him outside? Yeah. Doorways are definitely a learning curve. He's definitely still learning. He doesn't seem to care what his wheels go over, if it's someone's foot, a dog's foot, a duck. That I've noticed, and then he's getting better and better at turning, but he definitely sometimes will still sort of walk into something and look at me like, ah, oh, help. So it might be my fault because I run in and help him every time, but he's getting better and better. I think he's turning better. His height adjustment worked out really, really well. I had the right components to, to just raise him up, and he seemed to do really, really well with it. All right, All thank right. you so much. You're welcome. Despite the added workload, Janice thrives with these kinds of specialized cases at Possibility. If I was a dog, I would be a border collie. Like, I just have to, like, I have to be busy. And this has allowed a certain degree of busyness, and you feel like you just want to get through the work and, and get the people seen and get them into their devices. Simone Cupid, Integrated Described Video Specialist. Karen McGee, Content Development Specialist. Jennifer Johnson, Coordinating Producer. Karen Nye, Director, Production. Brian Perdue, Director, Programming. John Melville, VP, Content Development and Programming. David Arrington, President and CEO. Produced for AMI by Mountain Road Productions. Copyright 2022 Accessible Media, Inc.